soldiers, did you know that this week is Banish's birthday? Yes, Banish is turning six years old. We started September 25th, 2013. So I can't believe, yeah, it's 2019. And I am so excited to be sharing Banish's birthday with y'all. So in honor of Banish's birthday, we are doubling the amount of stars you can earn on our Banish loyalty program. We just relaunched, revamped our Banish stars program. And the reason why we have it is because we really want to reward our Banish soldiers for helping us in this Banish movement. And by earning stars on your account, you can redeem them for goodies like free shipping vouchers, free products, free gift cards, and also free Banished merch. So take advantage of Banished's birthday by enrolling in our stars program. And again, you don't need to purchase um, products to earn more stars. There's so many other great ways to earn Banished stars. So in honor of Banished's birthday, I wanted to share with you just a few random facts of behind the scenes or just a few things that you might not know about Banish and also talk about what I've learned from the six years of running Banish and what we are going to do in the future. So let's get started to some random facts. If you guys don't know how I started Banish, basically I've had acne, acne scars my entire life. My skin is my absolute worst physical insecurity. It still is even to this day. I get every single skin issue known to man. I have really bad psoriasis and it's like scabbing on my elbows right now. But anything I put on my face, anything I put on my skin, any kind of skincare products I use, it causes me to get more cystic breakouts. So during this time of starting my YouTube channel, which I started my channel in 2009, I started reviewing a bunch of skincare products and I realized that the current skincare that was out there caused me to break out even more. So there would be ingredients like mineral oil, artificial fragrances, propylene glycol, petroleum, silicones, artificial colors, all that kind of stuff in skincare products that made the skincare products feel good to the touch, it feels good on your skin, but it actually caused me to break out. So even to this day, I am very, very picky about the skincare products I use. And every time I go into like a Sephora or whatever and just buy skincare products to use, I start developing little breakout milia things. It just, I don't know, my skin is very, very sensitive. So in turn of doing that, I realized that the natural ingredients, natural products worked really well for my skin. So I did so much research and I would actually go into Whole Foods or I would go into health food supply stores and actually make my own concoctions and it really helped calm down my skin. So after a while of getting rid of the cystic acne, I was left with really bad acne scars. So in terms of my cystic acne from a one to a 10, I would say it was a seven. I mean, there's definitely people who've had way worse cystic acne than I did, but the issue for me was that my skin scars super easily. The acne, the pimple, every single pimple would turn into a scar and that just, it just, you know, it just killed me, right? When you see so many scars on the side of your face and you know it's permanent, that really affected my self-esteem. So I did a lot of research into figuring out how to get rid of scarring and I was just really depressed because it was like getting rid of the acne was like so hard in itself, but what I didn't think about was getting rid of the scarring and I think the scarring, for me, it affected me more like internally than the actual acne because I knew it wasn't just a phase. I knew the scar would be there forever. And then I thought to myself, oh my gosh, for the next 80 years of my life, like I'm gonna have this kind of textured, uneven moon crater-like face. And it just really affected my self-esteem. Banish started really accidentally. In 2012, microneedling was totally unheard of. There was nobody doing it. They weren't even offering it in doctor's offices. Um, there were no at-home kits for microneedling. But I did get a few messages on my YouTube channel about people who heard about microneedling it said it would work for my skin. Now the thing about microneedling is that it works so, so well for ethnic skin because my skin has like a little brown pigment and undertone and um, regular treatments like lasers don't work for people who don't have like super pale skin. I didn't know that. So I went to a plastic surgeon and he actually said no. Yeah, he said no, the lasers won't work for your skin, but what you can do for getting rid of your acne scars is microneedling combined with certain ingredients like vitamin C, but certain forms of vitamin C freshly applied on the skin, that actually works better than anything he's seen in his practice and all that kind of stuff. So I took a lot of notes, I did a lot of research, I sourced 
you know, so many different forms of vitamin C, so many different forms of different ingredients. I just used the products on my face, didn't think anything of it, kept making YouTube videos, but within a few weeks, Everyone was asking me, Daisy, where did your acne scars go? Or Daisy, what happened to your skin? What are you using? And I was like, I'm not using anything. Like I haven't done like a skincare review video or whatever. And my mom, who is very, very like honest with me, she would say that my skin was blooming. Like it looked like there was this glow, like from the sun and from the clouds. And um, I even had people around me for the first time giving me positive unsolicited feedback about my skin just saying Daisy like your skin is glowing it looks so good and it was never like my skin was absolutely 100% flawless or clear but for once it had this like brightness and glow to it because before from all the years of trying so many different harsh skincare products my skin just always looked tired it just looked so tired of all the chemicals right and of the dryness and of the bleaching that a lot of skincare products did um, you guys wanted to try the products out and that is how banish started the first website looked like it was so bad but it didn't matter because the actual product worked the science behind it worked the ingredients behind it worked and it just worked so first and foremost something i have learned about life and everything is that it doesn't matter how something looks because the first Website was so ugly. The first packaging was so ugly. I mean, the first logo, I literally hand drew the logo and like scanned it in my computer and stuff. But you know, the actual product works and it gave results. So don't judge a book by its cover. Don't focus so much on the external focus on the internal, which is kind of the first thing that I've learned. So yeah, from there, it just kind of snowballed into what Banish is today. So let's go back. So while starting Banish, I knew I wanted to do something about it because I saw that it was something that was needed. I saw good quality skincare products are needed. The education about them is needed. We don't need to add all this crap to our skincare products to make it effective. And we need to educate all of the customers out there that, you know, the fragrance and the formulations and all that don't need to feel like this in order to work. And more importantly, I thought, you know, other than having the products actually work and giving a fast result, I thought it's so important to address the mental health of, you know, all the banished soldiers, all of our customers, because that is so much more important than the way you look. Because again, I was traumatized by feeling like, you know, for the rest of my life, I would have moon crater face all the time. That would be the first thing that people noticed about me. I was so determined to make this work and I can't describe to you this obsessive maniacal focus that I had, it was so crazy. Like, I don't think I could ever have that wave of feeling again. It was like, like, you know how they say like the devil took over her? It was like something took over me and I was just like, I have to make this work. I remember not being able to sleep for an entire week. I was tossing and turning and thinking of ideas and thinking of like, oh my God, I should have sleeping. I should be working. Like, like time is, time is ticking. Let's go, 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 go. I wouldn't be eating. I wouldn't be drinking any fluids. I was just so crazily focused on making this work. And it got to the point where like my eyes, I like literally would, wouldn't be able to open my eyes because I just wasn't sleeping. I was just on my computer. I was just working so hard and not giving myself any breaks. <laughs> when starting this business, obviously business takes money. And you know, when starting this business, it's not like someone gave me money. I didn't have any investors or whatnot. And so I had to be very creative on finding ways to support myself through this. So one thing I did was I actually rented out my room on Airbnb. So I lived with a roommate. It's probably against the landlord's <laughs> rules, but um, I rented out my room on Airbnb. I would make about 75-ish dollars a night there and then I would sleep on the couch in the living room which I was totally okay with because the couch is super comfy. I also did a lot of YouTube videos back then, sponsorship videos and all that kind of stuff. And then I also would purchase a bunch of Groupons. So back in 2012, Groupons were super popular. So I would buy like $20 to get $60 worth of food at the Cheesecake Factory. I would go to the Cheesecake Factory, order all that food and then get it take out or get it to go. And then I would have like a week's worth of food because the portions are huge. And I would divvy that up. So that way for the entire week I had enough food to eat and I wouldn't have to worry about cooking because cooking would distract me from running my business, you know? So it was so crazy. I was so focused. Anybody who knew me back then in 2012 was like, like Daisy, like that's all she talked about. Like she wouldn't shut up about it. Like I didn't know what to talk about to other people other than my business and like getting feedback and all that. Cause I was just so crazy 
so, so crazy. And I had to make it succeed because I knew I had this amazing product. I knew it worked and I knew other people needed to know about it, but I just didn't know how to get from point A to point B. Those are kind of some of the things I did that people might not have like known or realized, but there were, there were a lot of like obstacles, you know, it wasn't smooth sailing and people always see the, you know, glamorous side. They see the highlight reel, they see the awards and the recognition and where you were featured in, but, uh, but people don't see the struggles and the pain points of, you know, a business. One of the first struggles was I purchased my first inventory and it was like $35,000 and I had no money. Like I had no money. I was literally renting out my room on Airbnb. So I had no money. So I took out five personal credit cards with my name. I would put like, you know, $7,000 on each of them so I could finance the inventory and the inventory got completely destroyed just due to an oversight that I didn't think about. And it really crushed me because this was literally like before I made a single sale, I was just like, oh my God, like, like, like how is this gonna happen, you know? Maybe I'm not meant to do this. And I had all these negative thoughts, like, you know, maybe this is the reason why small businesses fail. Maybe this is the reason like why it's not gonna work. Maybe this was all stupid. Like, what am I doing with my life? Like, you know, here I am like 23, 23 years old, like, just like, oh my God, everyone's telling me it's impossible. Like, how is it gonna happen? I even remember like emailing random people in the beauty industry and like, I remember most people didn't respond. This one gal responded to me and she actually told me that it was like impossible for me to do what I was doing. It was really, really like a dark period. I didn't have like a mentor. I don't have a co-founder. I own 100% of the company. My parents didn't give me any money. It wasn't like somebody just reached out to me and be like, here, I'm gonna show you how to do this. It was me literally like, figuring it all out. Like in the mornings, I would go to the post office and ship out the packages and I would input the tracking numbers in my computer and I would actually do all the live chat. So during the day, I would be filming videos and doing live chat and emailing customers. And then after dinner at night, I would be starting, you know, cooking and concocting all the products and shipping them out. And I would end at like 2 a.m. That way in the morning, right when the post office opened, I would be the first to go there to ship out the packages because Banish's mission is if you order the night before, we make it the next day and then we ship it out the next day. And it's still like that six years later, but in the beginning it was me. Other memories I have was like, me going to Office Depot. And this is kind of when I knew like the business, like there was something going on with the business because I wasn't able to ever take like a break or a vacation in the early years. I couldn't even be gone for one day because we always had so many orders. So yeah, it was like, I remember one day I literally drove to like three or four Office Depots I bought out all of their packaging materials. I bought out their envelopes, their bubble wrap, their packaging tape. And I think from that on, I realized like there is something here because I had no money in advertising. You know, I put all of the profits back into the business. And just to know that when you buy out, you know, three full office, you know, depot stores of bubble wrap, that's when I knew like maybe we're onto something, you know? So my first big like leap of faith was I put out a job posting ad for my first hire. My first hire was the sweetest girl named Mariel. And she worked with us for three or three years or so. And she was so, so helpful in terms of me scaling up the business. She helped me package. She also helped me set up the Airbnb stuff, like just all these things. And you know, times are tough, you know, in the beginning. So I would literally drive her, like I pick her up from school. I would give her some of my food from like the Cheesecake Factory Groupon. Um, we would just work together and then I'd drive her back to the train station and stuff. And yeah, it was just kind of cool because like she didn't have a car, so I would drive her. And it worked out that way and uh, and yeah, she really helped me like package and stuff. So that way I could focus more on working on other sides of the business. And then my next hire was a lovely girl named Katie, who is still with me today. She's absolutely amazing and has grown with the business as well to what it is today. And so now we are a team of say, 13, 14, <laughs> and it's been really, really cool to have an amazing team because without the team, obviously Banish wouldn't be here today. I'm only one person. I can only ship so many orders. You know, I can only do so many like chats with the customers and make so many videos. So I'm really, really thankful for everyone who's been with Banish, you know, <laughs> from everyone who has been part of Banish and has been with Banish because 
without you guys, it wouldn't be, you know, six years old today. So those are some of the behind the scenes kind of a banish. But you know, there again, there's also other issues that the comp I mean, not other issues, but there's also things that people don't know behind the scenes, like, you know, even hiring employees in California, you have to be super, super careful and keep really, really good records. And you know, then you find out other brands are, you know, completely ripping you off and you have to spend, you know, almost like, <sighs> like six figures and defending yourself and all this kind of stuff. And then you deal with, you know, once you are of a certain scale of a business, you have to spend a lot of money protecting yourself, which is also really like, I don't like doing that. Like that's a part of the business I don't like doing. I don't, I want to be creative. I want to have fun. I want to think of new ideas. I want to make the products better, but you also have to think about protecting yourself, which is really, really scary because a lot of shit can go down. A lot of shit can go wrong. Like every decision you make, something could go wrong. You have to be able to stomach that risk and go on this roller coaster ride of things. And I mean, it hasn't been perfect, but we've been around for six years, so we're doing something right. <laughs> I'm so, so proud of Banish. Um, I own 100% of the company. I haven't taken any outside funding. I get calls and emails from people wanting to invest in Banish, but it's not something that I care about more say because I think like control for me is really, really important. Control in the sense that the company needs to come from something that resonates well with me. Everything that we do, it needs to sit well with my values, my mission, because I am serving all of the millions of people that had the same story I did. You know, I was that girl so depressed, looking in the mirror, thinking about how can I go another day with my skin looking like this. And so because I've had those experiences, I want to make sure that everything that we're doing is serving those little girls that were me, you know, in the past. That's why I said no to so many opportunities like that, um, simply because I don't want them, I don't want Banish to be something that it's not. And I think it's so, so important for Banish to have its authenticity, to kind of stick to its roots. And that's something I've had to learn in the past few years that this world can be very distracting. There can be so much bullshit in this world. People are always gonna try to sell you things. People are always gonna try to overcharge you and tell you that you're not good enough and tell you because you're you know, a 31 year old Asian girl, like you don't know what you're doing. Like there's gonna be so much bullshit out in this world. And you always have to like go back and like recenter yourself. Remember why you started and what your mission is and like what your purpose is in all this. Because you know, at times you sometimes doubt yourself and at times there's, you know, you look and you look at CEOs and you look at people who are running businesses and they don't look like you. And so, you know, you wonder like, am I really like good enough to do this? Am I really able to do it to get it to the next step? It's kind of like, have you guys seen that movie, The Intern, where um, Anne Hathaway, like they want to replace her as CEO and she's going through all this like personal stuff and she thinks she can't do it, but then she gets back to her roots and she goes back and teaches, you know, the warehouse team how to package and do all this stuff and all this stuff and the company turns around. It's kind of like that. You like, you always go through these moments where you're like, ooh, am I doing the right thing? But for me, what has been really important is to you know, get away from all of the noise and go back to that Daisy who had those issues because that is, you know, what that I mean, that's who we're serving. You know, we're serving me back then. And I'm so, so grateful now. I mean, I'm almost 31 years old. Um, 2019, we're going on to 2020 that if people are suffering with acne or acne scar or any kind of skin condition, there's a, such a positive community out there where people are talking about their skin issues and people are showing their brave faces. Uh, my first growing up ugly video was published in 2012. And I felt like I was like one of the first to you know share that part of me. But now so many people are doing it and I'm so, so proud because now those like young teens who are going through their skin issues realize they're not alone and that acne is so normal and that having scarring is so normal and it's just part of who you are, just like having freckles is or having blue eyes is, you know, it's like so, so normal now and I love that. And I love how we're using social media to engage um, our banished soldiers in a really positive way. So. Blah, blah, blah. Besides the point, what's, what's next for Banish? Well, we are definitely going to be testing, trying out different ingredients, trying out different skincare products. I actually have a few vials of products, I of ingredients I have on my desk. And when I have time, I'll just put them on my skin. I'll try them out, um, try out different ingredients that are coming out, but they're not stuff that you can find like that are popular. If you've noticed Banish, we never really launch things that are popular. Like I don't really care. Like for example, like bubble mask, sheet mask, no, I, that stuff doesn't work for me. It just never has worked for me, so I'm not gonna launch it. So if it doesn't work for me, 
we're not gonna like do it just because it's popular. There are a few couple of really cool ingredients that are pretty much under the radar right now that I've been testing and trying out. So we're just constantly trying to make our products better and also getting customer feedback. So every week we spend several hours of our time researching our customers, sitting down with them, having, you know, hour long Skype sessions with them, talking about, you know, their feedback about the products and getting to know them and really understanding who they are because we're, we're doing this for you. You know, Banish is not for me. It's not for anyone else. It's for you guys. So in order to improve the company, we need to spend time to sit down and really understand like, you know, everything that's going on and how, you know, it, once we understand who our core customers are and who you guys are, then we can improve the company for you guys. So that is a huge, huge, huge priority at Banish. And the fact that we take the time to sit down and really understand who you are and also share your story on our new Instagram account at Banish. We're going to be sharing all of our amazing customer stories. I mean, we have thousands thousands of before and after pictures and thousands of stories that we want to share with every single one of you. But I think that the biggest thing that, you know, we've been focusing on and I definitely want to focus is I want to change the way people feel about themselves. That's first and foremost, other than creating really great skincare products, which we already have and we're always innovating on that. I really want people to feel like they can be the best version of themselves that they don't need to have, you know, clear skin or that they don't need to have like acne free skin, pimple free skin. Even if they have all these skin conditions, they can still be the best version of themselves. That they don't need to go outside and hide and you know, like not be who they authentically are from the world. So I really want to change the beauty industry. I want to change the beauty standard. That is the biggest mission that I personally have because if you think about it, a lot of what beauty is, is a standard of perfection. Like who defines what beauty is? Who defines what having perfect skin is? Who defines what being perfect is? It's, it's a standard and who defines that? It's these big, 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 big corporations out there, right? And so I wanna change the narrative of the beauty industry. So those are the past six years of Banished. Thank you all so much for listening to me blabber around, <laughs> talking really fast about, you know, some things that have happened about Banished. So excited because after six years, we'll celebrate our 10 year milestone, 20 year milestone. Oh my gosh, 50 year milestone. Can you believe that? Like I heard like, was it 98% of businesses fail within the first year? And then like, I don't know what percent fail the fifth year, but like the average lifespan is like, it's not that long because you know, businesses, like it's super competitive. Like there's always, like you're, you're competing against everyone, right? And things change really quick and you have to adapt really quick. But I know for a fact that if we stay true to our mission and our roots, and if we can be flexible enough to innovate with our customer's feedback, then we will absolutely be here for decades to come. So thank you so much. And don't forget, it's our Banish Stars week. So definitely sign up and earn your points. And I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.